Welcome to Rounding Numbers in Python. My name is Christopher, and I will be your guide. In this course, you'll learn about rounding numbers, how there are multiple algorithms for rounding, the shortfalls of those multiple algorithms, how floating point messes all this up, and how the decimal class might give you something a little more precise than floating point. The code in this course was tested with Python 3.12, but there's nothing in here particularly new, and most of it likely would be the same even in Python 2. The rounding you were taught how to do in grade school likely isn't exactly the same as what Python does. It's close, but there are some edge cases that are probably different. In fact, there are many different ways of rounding numbers, ranging from the simple to the more complex. And unfortunately, almost all rounding algorithms will affect the shape of your data. If your data is a bell curve centered at zero, there's a chance the rounded version of your data is shifted left or right. This is one of the reasons there are different ways of rounding to deal with this problem. The other complication is that floating point numbers are not a precise numeric representation. And so when you round them, you might not see the behavior that you expect. Okay, next up. I'll start you on your rounding journey. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Like a record, baby. Depending on your age, you'll have to Google both record and the British pop sensation Dead or Alive, or you can just nod your head at the dated reference and move on. In the previous lesson, I gave an overview of the course. In this lesson, I'll show you Python's built-in round function and why you should use it. The algorithm you were likely taught in grade school for rounding goes something like this. Pick the position to the right of where you want to round. If the value of that digit is less than 5, then throw away that digit and everything to the right of it. Whereas, if the value of that digit is 5 or more, increase the value of the digit to the left and chop everything else. But this isn't a math course. It's a Python course. Let's go use Python's built-in round function in the REPL. To round a number using the built-in function, you simply call the round function. Like before, 1.4 rounds to 1. And 1 1.6 rounds to 2. As does 1.5. And... Ooh, wait a second. That's a little unexpected. It isn't a bug. It's a feature, I promise. There is more than one algorithm to round numbers. And as with all sorts of choices in life, there are pros and cons for each of these algorithms. The built-in round function uses what is called the half away to even rounding strategy, which is the default rounding rule in the IEEE standard that specifies how floating point numbers work. This course is all about the different kinds of rounding strategies and their consequences. But before going there, let's briefly talk about why you might want to round at all. Throughout this course, I'm going to be using a utility library I've written with a variety of rounding methods in it. The file it's in is called rounding.py. And here I'm showing the first method in rounding.py, which doesn't really round at all. It only truncates values, chopping the number off at the desired rounding point. All of my rounding functions take two arguments. Num is the number to be rounded, and decimals is the number of significant digits. Remember when I said that vague thing, pick the position to the right of where you want to round? Well, mathematically, the easiest way of doing that is to multiply the number by 10 to the power of the number of digits that you want in your precision. The value of decimals defaults to 0, and 10 to the power of 0 is 1, so with the default, you're rounding to the one's digit. In this next line, I'm converting a float to an integer because that causes the value to be truncated. So that I can truncate at any decimal position, I first multiply, then convert, which does the truncation, then divide back down to the original magnitude. As an example, let's think back to 1.4. Calling truncate will multiply 1.4 by 1, which of course is 1.4, then convert 1.4, the float, to an int. That truncates it to 1. It then divides it by the multiplier, which was 1, and 1 divided by 1 is still 1. And as this is a truncation method, even if the value was 1.99999, you're still going to get 1 as a result. Okay, 
With Truncate in place, let's do a little experiment. Say you had $100 to play with on the stock market. And let's say the market fluctuates randomly, going up or down by some amount less than a nickel. It does this once a second. To emulate this market in Python, I'm going to loop through 1 million seconds, adding or subtracting a number between 0 and 0 0.05 to our $100. At the end, we'll see how much money is left. If the fluctuation is truly random, you should end up with something pretty close to 100 bucks. To show you how Truncate can mess with math, I'm going to actually calculate two values. The fluctuation I just explained, and that same value truncated to three decimal places. To do that latter part, I've imported the Truncate function from our rounding module. Next, I need a random number, so I'll import the random library. Random values in computers aren't actually random. They're pseudo-random. That means the so-called random value is generated based on an algorithm. But if you start the algorithm from the same point, you'll get the same list of values out of it. This can be good and bad. It makes it easier to debug and test because you can get a predictable sequence of random values. Of course, if you really need an actual random number, predictable is bad. So the gambling industry, for example, goes to a lot of work making sure the starting point is unpredictable as well. To set the starting point for the random module, you call the seed function. Now, if I ask for a series of random numbers, I'll get them. If I call seed again, I will get the same list of numbers. So random, but predictable, but not quite random. You get the idea. With that out of the way, let me store my $100 in a variable. And then do it again for the value that I'm going to truncate instead. That's so you can see the difference. Now I'm going to loop a million times. If you haven't seen these underscores before, it's a great little feature in Python which makes integers more readable. It's kind of like the position separator you might write in a number, either a comma or a period, depending on where you live. Inside this loop, I'm going to determine how much money is going to go up or down by asking for a random number between minus 0 0.05 and positive 0 0.05. That fluctuation I'm calling delta. Then I'm going to actually apply the delta to my value. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the cut value, but instead I'm going to truncate as I go along. All right, let her rip. And now let's see how much money I made. Hmm. I'm down just over three bucks and 50 cents. I randomly got a few more negative deltas than positive ones. If random.uniform is fair, over enough time, it should work out to 100 bucks. Now let's see how the truncated version did. Ooh, that's not good. That's almost all my money gone. Simply by truncating to three decimal places, I've lost over $99. Truncating is introducing a bias to our math. Dealing with this kind of bias is why there are a variety of rounding algorithms. More on that later. To show you why you should round instead of truncating, let's do the experiment again, but this time using Python's round function. Reset my seed so I get the same random values, so it's a fair comparison. Resetting my starting. And storing a rounded version, like cut. My loop. The same delta. Calculate the actual like before. And now instead of calculating cut, I'm going to calculate rounded using the rounding method. Once more into the breach. Same seed, so the actual is the same as before. And when I round, instead of cut, I get something that's much better. It isn't perfect, but by rounding to three decimal places instead of truncating, I've only lost a difference of about 20 cents. This is why you round when you need to get rid of things instead of just truncating them completely. Next up, we'll start your journey across the land of rounding with rounding up. Get your hiking boots on. It's a climb.
In the previous lesson, I showed you truncation and why you want to round instead. In this lesson, I'll begin to explore the different ways of rounding, starting with rounding up. To better understand why Python has chosen the algorithm it has for the built-in round function, over the next couple of lessons, I'm going to show you different ways of doing rounding. I'm starting with rounding up. In this case, any value other than zero in the rounding position causes an increment of the next position to the left before zeroing everything else out. Consider the number 12.345. Rounding up in the tens position gives 20. That's because the value in the ones position is bigger than zero, so the value in the tens position gets bumped up. Rounding up in the ones position results in 13 because the three in the tenths position is bigger than zero. Four in the hundredths position means rounding on the tenths gives you 12.4. And likewise, five bumps the four up one as well. Let's look at some code that does this. To implement rounding up, I'm going to use the seal function in the math module. Seal is short for sealing, which means to return the nearest integer greater than or equal to a given number. The seal of 3.7 is 4. Seal on a round number is itself, which makes sense as the closest integer to 2 that's greater than or equal to 2 is 2. Seal on negative 0 0.5 is 0. Notice that it isn't negative 1. The closest integer greater or equal to means going up. Up from negative 0 0.5 is 0. Let's do another negative. And again, that greater than or equal to thing means going up, going to the right. Let's build this into a roundup function. I'm back in rounding.py. And like with truncate, I'm multiplying by a power of 10 to get at a specific decimal place before I start the rounding. Also like truncate, I multiply. But this time, instead of chopping the value, I'm calling ceiling on it. Then I divide it again to restore the number back to its original magnitude. Let's try this out. Importing. Round up 1.1. That's two. Let's test this with a non-default decimal position. 1.23 to the tenths is 1.3. Again, rounding up. And there's some hundredths. Looks good. One side effect of using the power of 10 multiplier is that you get rounding on the left of the decimal place for free by passing in a negative number. 22.45, rounding negative one decimal places, gives you 30. All right, that's enough positivity. Let's be a little more negative. And once again, because of the use of ceiling, negative numbers trend towards zero when you round them up, heading to the right. One way to think about the negative number situation is to visualize a number line. Rounding up means moving to the right on the line. Any value that isn't dead on an integer is going to move rightwards. For positive numbers, that means a bigger value. For negative numbers, that means a smaller negative i.e. heading towards zero. What goes up must come next.